Hi everyone, Nothan e. Way Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Ken Carson album, X. This is a brand new LP from rapper and vocalist Ken Carson, the follow-up to his Project X project last year. He's currently riding a wave built off of the buzzing and high-energy brand of Trap, forged by Playboy Cardi through releases like Die Lit and Whole Lot of Red. In the wake of those records, there have been plenty of very successful copycats who have put their own spin on this sound, be it Casey, whose style right now is proving to be so versatile it's hard to tell what direction he may kind of take things in in the future. There's also Cochise, who has a brand new record out, Yeet, who is arguably the most successful of all of the uh, Cardi disciples operating today. He's really done his own thing with it and has an instantaneous recognizable vocal that uh, really makes the guy stand out. There are more that I could name, but this review is about uh, Ken Carson here, who is so deeply ingrained into this new sound, this project of his, has actually been released on the Opium label, which is uh, run by Playboy Cardi. With that, Carson is essentially being given the go-ahead to uh, rip off this sound to his delight and benefit off of it as much as he can, which honestly is kind of a genius move on Cardi's part to essentially create this hype, create this wave for his sound, and then kind of benefit off of it on the back end through artists who are uh, willing to copy it, whether they are working for him or not. We've seen this play out before through uh, instances like Young Thug, taking some of the artists who are indebted to his sound, getting them on the YSL label. Travis Scott, same thing with his own label too. This is not a new occurrence. But a few points to make here. Imitators are rarely remembered as well as uh, originators. Additionally, Ken Carson is not only failing on this record to bring anything truly new or refreshing to the sound, but he's barely even reaching the standards for what we are calling rage music at this point. Not that the standards for vocals, lyrics, and instrumentals have uh, proven to be super high to begin with, but for the most part on X, he's just kind of coming through, checking the basic boxes, and not really adding anything else here, not spicing it up, not going super hard, not bringing a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. Like, does he even offer a vocal or a vocal style that makes him stand out? Not really. The performances generally across this project are very underwhelming, they are rough, they are loose, they are subpar. Nowhere near the raw energy that a guy like Cardi brings to a track, or even Yeet for that matter. The flows are pretty messy a lot of the time too. Carson doesn't even feel like he is on beat. Uh, with a lot of these tracks, he's almost rapping faster than some of these songs are moving. Going Skits is one of many songs on this project where he kind of sounds like he's trying to race the beat to the finish line. And the use of autotune on this thing is so gross and over the top. Not that there's anything wrong with autotune generally, but in this case, it's obviously being applied so hard to mask not only the lack of rhythm to Carson's flows, uh, but also like the lack of any kind of melody or tune or anything uh, vocally. But despite all that extra extra effort uh, being made here, it's, it's still kind of clear that Carson doesn't uh, have a whole lot of range vocally, a whole lot of personality vocally. Like I said earlier, he doesn't even bring a high level of energy to these tracks, uh, like many of his contemporaries in this Rage Lean do. And even when a track here does kind of go a little hard at first, it gets really old really quick. Because, like, are there any standout refrains on this thing? Choruses? Hooks? Uh, not really. Ken Carson is, is truly not a songwriter in any sense of the word, which you can kind of tell when you listen to uh, the two tracks on this record that are noted as freestyles and compare those with all the other songs on the record and um I don't know, vocally, lyric-wise, th th there's really no difference going on here. Like, I don't get a sense that uh, Carson has freestyled these two tracks, and meanwhile, every other song here is just, oh yeah, he spent a lot of time writing all of this out and planning this track, because <laughs> every goddamn thing on this album just sounds so uh, badly performed and off-the-cuff and half-baked and unplanned, and not that that's necessarily a bad way to go about music. Improvisation, kind of flying by the seat of your pants, uh, getting on the mic and just kind of throwing whatever out there, see what works. It's a valid approach if you actually have the chops to pull it off. I would say Ken Carson very much doesn't. And not that I'm looking for Ken on this record to do or say anything super deep or profound. I truly am not. But like, if you are going to be spitting on the mic, like, 
I, I say something kind of clever or funny or something, something that stands out and isn't gross, you know, like uh, uh, making your girl take a plan B because her plan A was to keep it. Yeah, it's a little awkward. The production also on this record is really samey, run of the mill, sometimes just so lo-fi and rough around the edges, it's ass. There are beats on this thing where the perks and the subs, the 808s and the keys that are all used sound so damn alike. I feel like I'm hearing the same couple of songs like over and over, or I swear I heard this song earlier on the record. So yeah, there is kind of a sense of deja vu on this project because there isn't much range to the production. There isn't much range to Ken Carson vocally and artistically. Yeah, he is really truly just a dollar store Playboy Cardi. He is just the generic store brand of Playboy Cardi. He is watered down Diet Pepsi, Playboy Cardi. There is no appeal to him or his music other than that it is on trend and it is fitting for the time that it is existing in. That is literally it. He is contributing nothing to the sound, nothing to this style. He's not even doing it particularly well. There is nothing exciting, refreshing, fun or interesting about this project. It is just drivel. It is a void. It is emptiness. It is a lack of something. And um, yeah, I didn't really find anything on this project to be good or entertaining or interesting or special in any way. Uh, fuck 12, I mean, that's kind of a cool sentiment, that's fine. Outside of that, I wouldn't really say there's too much of an appeal to this project. I mean, I'm open to Ken Carson down the road, improving, adding something to his sound, doing something that makes him stand out, doing something that is uh, even a smidge memorable. I, I would rather just listen to Yeet or Cardi. There's, there's really nothing that Ken Carson uh, brings to the table that his contemporaries don't do five, six, seven times better. I'm feeling a strong zero to a light one on this one. Transition, have you given this project a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you braid it? You're the best, you're the best. What should, what should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Ken Carson, uh, forever.